Good morning, sweet ones. It's time for Sunday school. I don't know if you can tell, but I am in a hotel room. We are in Raleigh, North Carolina this weekend for a family wedding. My cousin Rod, his older daughter, Rachel, is getting married um, Saturday at five o'clock, and we're just so excited to be here. I have a big family, and it's just wonderful to be all together. Um, Russ didn't come with me this time, but I have Caitlin and Fred in the room next door, and so it was nice to drive down with them and just be joyful together. There's a lot of joy in this group, and I want to talk about joy a little bit. It's a little bit different than just being with family, but when we're joyful, and we are a, a believing family, so we were all raised in church, um, that joy comes from praising God. And there are great things that happen when we praise God. And so we're going to talk about <clears throat> two men, Paul and Silas, today, uh, and a time that they were actually in jail. So <clears throat> this story takes place near a place called Philippi, kind of like our Philippi, which is close to us. And in Philippi, Paul and Silas were staying with Lydia. Do you remember Lydia? She was the lady with the purple cloth. I think we might have talked about her last week. And there are some remarkable things that happen to these men, and we'll pay close attention to how they handled some really bad situations. Have you ever been accused of something you didn't do? Like maybe at school, somebody said you broke something and you didn't do it. Or have you ever gotten in trouble for something that wasn't your fault? I'm sure those of you that have brothers and sisters that might have happened to. Well, that happened today in Paul and Silas's story. So let's go right into it. Um, remember, Paul was a missionary and he was, he had first, in his first part of his life, he had persecuted Christians. He had gone after them, and he had even killed some Christians for their beliefs. But then God met with him and saved him, and he turned his life around. And then he was a missionary who traveled all around telling the good news of God and Jesus. And as he traveled, Paul would join forces with friends along the way. The Holy Spirit worked through these men to do amazing miracles, but not everyone was happy with that, of course. And in this story, Paul and Silas got into some trouble for helping someone. So let's read. This is in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain from fortune telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. So there was an evil spirit inside this girl. Um, she was calling out things not of her own power and Paul could tell that the demon was really kind of taking over he ordered it out of her <clears throat> excuse me and she was immediately healed but that meant she could no longer be a fortune teller and do tricks for her owners and earn her masters their money this made them very upset and they looked for an excuse to have Paul and Silas arrested so let's read more in the scripture. This is verses 19 through 24 in Acts chapter 16. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. So 
It didn't take a lot to get those people riled up about Paul and Silas, did it? The crowd started attacking them for no real reason except what the angry slave owners had, had claimed about them. They got so upset that they chained Paul and Silas and put them in jail. I don't know if you know what old stocks look like, but they really had them bound up. <clears throat> and it was rough for them. Well, what do you think if you would do if you got in trouble like this? What kinds of punishment do you normally face when you do something wrong? I don't think they're quite this severe. I'm not sure what I would have done. I certainly would have been upset, especially when I don't think they were doing anything wrong. They were just demanding the demon come out of the girl. They were trying to help her. So let's go on. This is verses 25 and 26. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Can you imagine? That's quite a turn of events. Paul and Silas, who had been beaten and put in jail, were not pouting or being depressed or licking their wounds. Instead, they were rejoicing. They were singing songs, hymns of praise, giving praise and rejoicing in a way because they had the opportunity to suffer the way Jesus did and suffer for Jesus. Now, normally we don't think of giving praise when we get in trouble or when bad things happen. But that's exactly what Paul and Silas did. They sang songs and prayed and praised God, thankful that he was near to them. And naturally, of course, everyone in the jail overheard this mini concert. And then something remarkable happened. An earthquake shook. And it shook the foundations of the jail itself. And all of a sudden, Everyone in the jail, not just Paul and Silas, but everyone in the prison were freed from their chains. That's unbelievable to me. Now, I want you to think about something. Would you run out of the jail if that happened to you? I'm pretty sure I would have, but listen to what happened. That is not what Paul and Silas did. They stuck around for the sake of the prison guard. He was really worried when he saw what had happened with the earthquake and that the shackles came off. And he knew that if the prisoners escaped, that would mean he had failed his job. And do you know what happened when that happened? When those things kind of kinds of things happened? The, pri the jail, the prison guard, sorry, would have been executed. He would have died because he didn't do his job. But that didn't happen. And I want you to listen to this next part. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. So this is verses 27 through 34. When the jailer were, woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all of his family. Then he, then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. Wow, isn't that just an awesome story? Paul and Silas sang and prayed even in the darkest and dreariest of places. They had been wrongly accused. They had been beaten and thrown into jail. But in spite of all that, they still followed God and hoped in him. God allowed them to escape their imprisonment. 
but he also used the opportunity, he used this circumstance to save the jailer and his family. Amazing and positive things came from a really hard and bad situation. So it reminds me that we need to ask ourselves a question and that's how can we give thanks during a hard or a challenging time? You know, when my mom spent all those weeks in the hospital back in January and February, um, I had a really hard time praying and praising. But I found that when I was driving from Buchanan to, to Bridgeport to see her in the hospital, if I turned on praise music, it helped me and it made things feel better. Now, I want you to be sure that you understand that you don't have to act or feel happy all the time. Sometimes we might feel sad. I was sad when my mom was in the hospital and, and that's okay. And even when we do the right thing, our stories might not seem like they have a happy ending right away. But God loves you, loves me, he loves all of us and he cares about us. And he wants us to remember his presence with us and live really aware of that. We can be thankful and joyful even when the times are hard, remembering that in the end, according to his word, all things work for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That's in Romans 8, 28. I told you I love this story. I think it's one of my favorites because I'm a praiser. I love to sing. I love to pray to God and thank him for all that he, done, he has done. And I love just to tell him how much I love him and how amazing he is. And I think this story really reminds me that there's a lot of power in that. So when things are hard, remember, praise him. Thank him for all he is and all he's done and thank him for loving you. And I think you'll find that even if you're not happy right then, you'll find the joy that's inside of you. Well guys, we've got a busy day ahead of us so I'm gonna go get re finish getting ready and get to brunch with my family. But it's so good to spend time with you as always. And I love you and I miss you and I will talk to you real soon.